Hi guys, this is Matthew from Poltan.org and today we're going to take a look at the all-new Kia Optima GT. You're looking at an all-new model, this one priced at 175,000 ringgit, putting it close to the Toyota Camry Hybrid and the full-spec Honda Accord. The good news is, this undercuts its closest European rivals by close to 20,000 ringgit, such as the Volkswagen Passat and the Ford Mondeo. Under the hood is a brand new 2.0-litre 4-cylinder engine with direct injection. It's turbocharged to make 242 horsepower and 350 Nm of torque, making it the most powerful D-segment sedan on sale in Malaysia today. Power gets sent to the front wheels through a 6-speed automatic transmission with pedal shifters, and it can get from 0 to 100 in 7.2 seconds. But first, let's talk style. It's quite a sporty looking car to begin with, starting with this new dot array mesh front grille, sleek full LED headlamps, down here, you don't get fog lamps. Instead, you get air curtains, which channels air towards the outside of the wheel for aerodynamic purposes. This function is similar to what you find in modern BMW cars. But on the side, you get GT-specific 18-inch wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 3 as standard. All four corners get this red brick calipers, and the front fenders get this fake air vents as per the old Optima. It's more for visual purposes, really. The car itself is close to 5 meters long and accentuating that length is this chrome strip that runs the length of the car, which is quickly becoming an Optima trademark sort of thing. Over at the back, things get a little bit more chiseled. The LED tail lamps are now slimmer compared to the previous gen and you get a set of diffuser and twin large exhaust. As for the boot, you get 510 liters of space. It's not quite as big as the Volkswagen Passat, but it's definitely bigger than most of its Japanese rivals. And typical of Korean makes, you do get a full-size spare tyre fitted with the same Michelin Pilot Sport 3 tyre. Overall, the evolutionary styling really works well in this generation. And in my humble opinion, I really think it's one of the best-looking cars in its class. Now, let's check out the interior. The cabin feels premium, particularly because it draws design inspiration from several German models. But having said that, the dashboard is covered in soft-touch plastics, as is the door cards. But if you move down the dash, you get a bit of hard plastics, but that's okay if you ask me because it's already far better in terms of perceived quality compared to its Japanese rivals. It comes with a long list of features, starting with this 7-inch touchscreen right here. If you ask me, I think it kind of looks out of place and undersized, and the operating system is a bit slow and feels aftermarket. Over here, you get dual-zone climate controls with clean air ionizer, and down here, electric parking brake as well as heated and ventilated seats. Not just for one, but for both front seats. I especially like this heavily bolted front seats, and you can have it in either red or black. You also get this unique-in-class full-size panoramic sunroof. I also like this dark headlining. It feels really nice and soft, and to be really honest, I think they do it better than some premium brands. In terms of safety, there's ABS, EBD, brake assist, hill start assist, VSC, as well as six airbags, all the usual stuff. But what you don't get is autonomous emergency braking like that found in the Mazda 6. Back here, legroom is pretty decent, as you can see. Headroom, not so much. But having said that, there's actually more space in the Accord and the Passat in the back seat compared to this. But if you move to the middle, things get a little bit tighter. The seat is slightly raised and the roof tapers down a little, so it's not really advisable for adults. On the plus side, you do get air vents here, twin power sockets down here, a sun blind for both sides, and for some reason, if you think that Malaysia is not hot enough, you can always use the heated seats function. Now, let's find out how it drives. Does it actually live up to the hype of being the most powerful car in its class? Well, not quite. I say that because the Passat 2 liter makes 217 horsepower, but in the real world, it feels much, much quicker than the Optima. Even on paper, the Passat is close to a second quicker from 0 to 100 compared to this car, but having said that, the Optima does have some serious, serious pace. What's interesting here is that the engine doesn't behave like a modern, small capacity turbocharged engine where power comes at one go from a very low RPM. No, instead, Power delivery is very linear and performs much like a higher capacity NA engine compared to a small turbocharged engine. Whether or not it's a good or bad thing, I leave it up to you to decide. But personally for me, I much prefer the immediate response of the Passat over this. But that's not to say that the Optima is not a fast car because it really really is. And compare this to the old one, 
this is miles miles better now going back to feeling like a bigger cc engine it actually sounds like it too let me show you <laughs> i mean it's up to you to decide whether you like it or not but to me i guess i guess it's a nice feature to have the sound itself doesn't come from the engine per se but it's synthesized through the speakers and the only way you can disable it is through the drive modes in eco mode you don't get any of the fake noise so it's the default mode to be driving in in town in normal mode you probably get 60 to 70 percent of the noise but in sport mode is when you get the whole shebang I, mean, I, I don't know if I can get tired of this, but... <laughs> As for the transmission, shifts are silky smooth, but it's not the quickest transmission in town. It's also one of the biggest reasons why the Passat with its DSG can outrun this by almost a second. Still, gear shifts are solid and it doesn't hunt around between gears all that often, making this transmission quite suitable for any type of driving really. This being the GT, it gets the full sports suspension, so it handles pretty well. In fact, much better than the older one. Taking this car through the twisty roads proves that it's actually quite a competent car. It's composed, balance is very difficult to unsettle, and more importantly, you feel confident taking the corner and the next. As with all Kia models, steering feel is as good as dead. This one's no exception. Of course, you've got drive modes to change how the steering feels, but that only adds weight, no extra feel. So if we're talking about driving dynamics, this car is quick, it's competent, but when it comes to fun driving, this car doesn't score very highly, unfortunately. As for how it rides, it's okay, it's livable, and unlike the Passat, you don't get adaptive dampers to change between soft and hard, so you're basically stuck with one setting. Now, if you're driving alone, that makes it okay, but if you've got a family of four, you'd be wishing for a softer suspension, especially considering that this is a D-segment car. Overall, if I were to summarize the driving characteristics of this car, it would be closer to that of a sporty European sedan more than a soft, comfortable Japanese sedan. But of course, this boils down to your own preference. But if you ask me, honestly, I think this car delivers a very solid driving package. So, that's the Kia Optima GT. It looks good, has a very premium cabin, and drives almost like a European car. But if you're planning on buying this as a family car, just keep in mind that the ride is a bit compromised because of the sports suspension. Again, at 175,000 ringgit, I think it's a decent buy, and it's much improved over the previous model. Share with us your thoughts in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. This is me, Matthew, signing off.